Ah, oh, crap. Oh, hi there, gamers. So I was playing my Atari 2600. Well, and I, I just realized that I don't really have that many games on it. I just have River Raid and Pitfall, and that's it. I would like to have something else to play, but, well, I don't. Of course, I could buy something from eBay, but that would be a waste of money. So I thought, what if I could make my own cartridge and put something fun on it? Like, how hard could it be? Since, as we know, Atari 2600 is a pretty primitive system. Well, since I don't have any DIY uh, videos on my channel, it could be the first one. So, I guess let's get started. Okay, so what am I going to use for this project? The most important part is this EEPROM, which is on, on this uh, Famicom cartridge that I uh, made back in the day. It's quite messy. So let's take the chip that we're going to use here. So EEPROM is a erasable programmable uh, ROM that we are going to put the uh, game ROM in it. We're also going to use this socket for this chip. Also, we're going to use a, a NOR gate chip. So I will, I will explain about it later. There is also a socket for this chip. Okay, so we're going to use uh, a Famiclone cartridge. As you see, the part <laughs> was cu cut off by me for, for another project. So we're going to use what's remaining. So this, this is going to be uh, contacts for, for, for our cartridge. And we're going to use a prototype board for, for our chips. Of course, we're going to use solder iron, some solder, some rosin, some screwdrivers, a couple of screws to screw the prototype board to the contacts, of course some, some wire, wire clippers, something to cut with, files, and of course later we're going to use EEPROM eraser to erase the chip, and of course we're gonna put the Atari game with this EEPROM programmer. So first step I think going to be we're gonna cut this. So we could just like make the contacts for our cartridge. So before I cut it I need to double check how many contact plates there are. I think we need to cut precisely with the 12 plate is okay let's let's cut it Just the, the cartridge. I guess we need to foil it a little bit. I don't want any sharp edges. So I'm gonna foil them down. Okay, I need to actually 
shall make the holes for the for the screws. Okay, I brought a knife. Let's let's try to make the holes with it. Okay, where's the where's the screwdriver? I should try to screw it in. That's it's getting in. Easy. Okay, we've got first screw. Let's see. I guess I should leave some 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 place. Maybe I I want to add some additional chips in future. One, two, three. And let's get it here. Okay, let's yes, let's prepare holes for the for the screws. All right, let's mark the holes. Okay. As I said, this prototype PCB is quite soft compared to. Garbage PCB. Okay. Let's, let's use the knife. Here we go. 
go. screw it's not going any further right I guess we're done with this part so we have a some kind of PCB so we can start adding the rest of the components Okay, so I drew a schematic of uh, a Tarot 2600 uh, cartridge slot and it's view from, a, from above, but I'm not really sure if the writing video computer system is here or, or is it here. So, well, I'm assuming that uh, like if we put the cartridge like this like this in the writing the title of the console is here then ground and 5 volts should be like somewhere here I need to solder uh, those two wires and we need to put this into the console and uh, Test uh, with the multimeter if, if we can get uh, ground and 5 volts. If my assumption is correct, then it should be like this. So let's solder the, 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 the wires and, and let's find out. my assumption was correct since we know that this is the uh, top and the cartridge goes like this then I guess we could start and solder in the socket for the for the EEPROM chip so I guess let's put it here
socket in place so we can start soldering more wires. Before I continue working with this messy wiring, I want to explain a few things about the about this chip. So as I mentioned, it is a erasable programmable ROM. It kind of works sim similarly like this piece of paper with squares on it. So the difference is that the chip has much larger grid than this piece of paper and also every square can contain a number uh, which is from 0 to 255 so for instance we can put 3 in here right every every square has an address let's say this this square's address is i don't know say it's three as well so in order to get it my com computer needs to know the address so, so let's say it already knows that uh, the data is in a square which has the address three but the computer doesn't understand the number three what it understands are ones and zeros so only binary so in binary 3 would be so 1 would be 1 2 would be 10 and 3 would be 11 how would computer uh, get the well it knows that the address is 11 how how would it get the data from from this chip so as you see there are a lot of pins here and each of them has either A or D. So A means it's an address pin. 
and this data. So to, to A pins, you supply the address of the square and as a result, you, you get the data on the data pins. As you see, there are three data pins here and five here. So in total, it's eight. What that means that you can get 8-bit data. Every each of this, those pins will get some kind of binary number. We can uh, represent those pins by like putting eight zeros. Um, six, seven, eight, so. So that means there is nothing. Well, at, at this moment, computer thinks that there's not and if you if we count the A's we see that there is total um it's a a a zero so it's first and a15 so it's last it's 16 what that means that the address is encoded by 16 bit so in total uh, this chip can 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 contain 64 kilobytes so if we raise number 2 by 16, we get around uh, 65,000. So, so, so this chip can contain approximately 64 kilobytes. Okay, so, so uh, let's, say, let's say Atari VCS wants to get that, that, that data, that 3, it doesn't know that there's some kind of data it's stored in chip but it knows the address that's 11 in binary so what it needs to do is to send uh, signals to the pins but as i said before uh, the chip of well, all computers only stands ones and zeros but since it's a old system uh, ones are represented by firewalls and zero well, of course, zero volts. So it needs to send, for instance, to pin zero and pin one. It will send one one, and the rest uh, address pins would be left zero. And then it will get, then chip will send uh, to the pin um, D zero and D one one one. So then it will, from uh, these pins, it will receive the 1-1, one, one. It, will, it, will, it will understand that it, will, it got 3 in decimal. If we look at the uh, Atari VCS uh, slot, we see that there is also 8 D pins, but it has only well, th 13 address pins, but the 12 is, is not used for addressing, as, as I understand. So, so it means that uh, by default, Atari VCS can only uh, access address that, that is 12-bit uh, long. So, so I think it's uh, 4 kilobytes. If we raise Two by twelve, we get four thousand ninety six. So, so it's four kilobytes. That means Atari VCS by default can access only four kilobytes from this chip. Even though we have sixty four kilobytes, we can access only four. Now, we need to connect all the address and data pins to the to the socket. I already soldered blue wires to the data pins and yellow to the address. Same is on other side. Well, except except the uh, twelfth uh, pin is, is special. We we will talk about it la later. Also, notice that. Um, at the bottom of this chip and 
the bottom of cartridge slot are pretty much similar. We only need to ignore those two pins since by default we can't access that much data. So we will connect them to ground and the rest of it will go here. top of the uh, cartridge slot is a bit, bit tricky since we don't need A14 and A13 we also will connect them to ground A8, A9, A11 will go directly here this uh, control pin output enable special one we will connect it later yeah A10 goes as well directly and chip enable control pin will be connected to the ground and data pins will be connected directly that's it so let's connect the wires
seems I'm almost done. So what is left is single pin on the EEPROM and see the wire dangling pin 12 on Atari VCS. Basically we need to enable this EEPROM chip but the chip expects a active low signal. I think it should be zero but the uh, Atari console supplies active high which is one so in order the chip to work we need to invert the signal and for that we are gonna use this chip so this is a Norgit chip it contains four uh, logical operators I drew the schematic basically we are going to use only one why exactly we are going to use the NOR not just simply an inverter well the main reason I could not buy the uh, inverter chip so I bought this one and you can actually trick the uh, NOR gate logical operator to act just as, as an inverter basically well, you see it has two inputs so need to uh, connect like this wire to both of these two inputs so the inputs are equal as you see from the uh, logical table if the inputs are equal uh, the result would, would be like uh, basically the same as with the with an inverter basically uh, if we supply um, active low we get one and if we supply one we get zero so it's an inverter so now our, our case Atari VCS will supply one and we get zero for, for the output enable for starters we should solder the socket for, for this chip well it's not necessary since the chip is it's not expensive at all, but oh, I, I like to put the chips in socket, so let's do that. So I will put the socket upside down, maybe like like this. Let's let's solder it. connected the power to the chip and ground so basically we should connect A12 from Atari VCS to second and third pins here and we can we can attach them let's attach them right that should do it so yeah we have the uh, inputs connected now we need to connect this pin to that one that should be an that should be the output for the and we're almost 
think we're almost done. That's it, so. Oh, we have the output connected to the to the chip enable of the EEPROM, so I guess we can add we can add the chip itself. We should match the uh, this indentation and let's obviously need to bend the legs a bit. And here we go. Okay, so we're basically done. So I hope that I don't need to solder anything anymore. So let's go to the next step, and that would be programming this chip. So basically, I have already my EEPROM programmer connected to the laptop. So let's Let's insert the chip. As you see, it shows how to insert the chip. So indentation should be uh, that way. So let's, let's insert it correctly. Let's insert it and press the clamp. Bam. So let's see what's on the chip. As you see here, it shows that the, the correct chip name. Let's just click read. And to well, as you see, there is something on the chip. Yeah. I'm afraid I will need to erase it. So we're gonna erase the chip with this EEPROM eraser. Basically, it's a, it's a plastic box with a drawer. And it also has a UV lamp and that's and some some kind of mechanical timer that that's basically it so as you see on the on the chip we have this window and if this window is exposed to uv light the information it will be erased so it's not necessary to use this box we could basically put it outside in the sun and i, I think in two or, or probably less Days it will be empty but since we don't have that much time we we're, we're gonna use this UV box Not, I don't really remember how it works and how I don't know if it's visible but there's a light emanating from the spot on down there so so it's, it's sort of working so let's see after a while if it will erase our chip okay i'm tired of waiting bam so let's read it well it seems it's empty since this ff which is which stands for 255 means that uh, the each 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 cell is is empty so it is empty so i'm not going to give you any any sources where you can get the roms since it's somewhat illegal i guess but well i will try to put a game rom on the on the chip i think i think i will put the uh, Enduro, which is a, a racing game, its size is 4 kilobytes, so it's exactly what I need. Yeah, so let's open it. Yes, see, I'm gonna leave everything by default. Okay, so as you see, the memory has been filled. So let's try to burn it to the, to the EEPROM. So let's click program, I think. Yeah, so let's program it. Now it says, oh, that was fast. I'm kind of surprised that it's, 
that fast. Okay. Okay. Now, now it is the last. Let's take out the chip and put it to, into our cartridge. Let's match the indentation. Since there are a lot of pins, we need to be careful. Not to slightly press the legs. Oh. Yeah, it's getting in. It's not, it's not that great that I'm touching with my fingers. And that's it. So basically, we can glue this window with some tape to prevent it from being erased. But if, if you're not going to uh, take it outside, then I think it's safe without anything. So let's put our cartridge into the uh, console and let's see if it works. Okay, the moment of truth. So here we have our ugly cartridge and let's put it into the, into the console. Yeah. Okay, here goes nothing. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Nope, doesn't work. What the hell? What did I did wrong? Yo! I don't believe it. It actually works now. Let's see. It actually works. I can't believe it was that easy. Let's try to play it. If it's playable. Yeah. It is playable. Nice. Wow. It was that easy. Yeah. So this way you can also make your cottage. Just like this one. So I hope Activision won't sue me. <laughs> so basically it's it's only a four kilobyte game that I added to this chip. So technically I could put about 16 games to this chip, so maybe, maybe in the next videos I will try to do that. Also I would like to, to, to add bigger games, like E.T., like who, who, who doesn't want to play E.T., maybe, maybe Hero, something like that, so if you would like to see that, put a like on this video and maybe I will make a sequel and then we'll, we will put more chips on this board on I don't know switches or something I have no idea how how what I will need to do to, to, to make it work I would like to figure it out and maybe to show it to you so thanks for watching so see you next time I hope bye